What's going on guys, it's the Bulls and the Bears here with a weekly recap video for the wheel option strategy. It is currently 11 a.m. right now on Friday, so the market's open. I have the day off because it's Veterans Day, but the market is open. Uh, I don't have any really significant positions open that are going to be really influenced by today's action, so I figured I'd just make the video now. We had a favorable CPI print yesterday. It came in uh, cooler than expected, and boy, did the markets love that. We had a 5.5% up day yesterday. That's absurd. The closest down day I can find is September 13th right here. And that was 4.3% to the downside. 4.3. That's a lot. But that's not 5.5%. That's crazy. These uh, bear market rallies or any type of pops or spikes in this bear market, they're just... Un they're just unheard of, kind of, and is a better, better way to put it. I mean, look at this day right here. Huge day right there. Um, probably the biggest candle on the chart was a green candle. So one hell of a day yesterday. We loved it with the wheel strategy because whether you're short puts or your long shares with the wheel, up days help. They, we love it. So what are we looking at here? Well, the day's still going. Going down to the 15-minute chart. You can see, uh, let's go to the five minute since there's not much time on in the market yet. So we, we push even higher and now we're selling off a little bit at the moment. So this is interesting because we're in a wedge. I, I pointed this wedge out in my last video. I've been, I've been monitoring this, hoping that we'd kind of trickle our way up to 400. That would give us some good opportunities with the wheel strategy before we inevitably break down and sell off and make new lows. Because that's what I do think the end game is. I do think we will make new lows. I'm not sipping the Kool-Aid on this CPI print and thinking that everything's back to normal and we're going to go up to all-time highs again. Hell no. But what are we going to do over the next couple weeks? That's that's for That remains to be seen. We could easily go up to 400. I was, um, I mean, this, this, this wedge was broken. We'll have to see how the day closes. But right now, well, I guess right now we sold off, but we were just broken out of this wedge. You can see the top wick on the daily on the daily candle so if we break this wedge to the upside then this kind of bearish ascending wedge is kind of invalidated typically with this pattern you'd look to see it break down and continue the bearish trend but before breaking out then this is kind of invalidated and then i would look for this overall orange wedge this orange triangle to be the next stop in this possible uptrend right now um, we have three points of contact on the top, going from all the way to the all-time highs to now, and three points of contact on the bottom. So this orange wedge is definitely a significant one. It's the it's the major one, and um, we could be on our way up to that. But it really depends on the daily close, because right now we're kind of back into this wedge. And if we close in the wedge, then I'm just going to consider that a little bit of a fake break, and that the wedge is going to continue to do its thing. Maybe we dip down, hit the bottom, go back up towards 400, and then we sell off. It'll be interesting how the day shapes up. We were broken out, and now we're back in the wedge. Um, so that today's close is going to mean a lot of how I see the rest of this going on, the rest of it shaping up, I mean. So, yeah, crazy day yesterday. I was able to close out of just about all of my positions, which was nice because my midweek update video i showed you how a lot of my positions were kind of in jeopardy DocuSign was underwater foot locker would just became in the money and a couple other positions were at risk well not after yesterday so we're going to get into it right now and we're going to start with DocuSign. here's DocuSign, and oh my god we are up nine and a half percent today i didn't even know that what the hell happened good lord look at this wow okay okay wow um, so I had the, the 4250 cash secured put, I sold one at the 44 strike last week. I rolled it down and out to this week. And as you can see here on Wednesday, we were in danger. We were at, we were below $40. We were quite a ways away from the, from the strike level. But then after yesterday's gap up and rip up, it was fine. And I ended up closing it. I sold it for a net credit of 45 cents, $45. And I closed it for $10. So it ended up being a $35 profit or 77% capture of the total premium. And now we're up almost 10% today. I don't know if there's any specific news on DocuSign. I didn't look at anything. But that's a, that's definitely a strong move compared to how the market is. The market's only up 15 basis points. 
spy is and docu signs up over nine percent that's crazy now i would have liked to get shares i mean i was i kept saying i was happy to own this thing near the 40s but now those up at 50 i don't know i might not be playing this thing for a little while because i, I don't want to get a sign unless it's near some solid areas of support especially in a bear market i'm not trying to get assigned way up here in a bear market where we might ultimately drift it back down again that's not the wise way to go about it right now in a in a in a normal bull market yeah, maybe that'd be fine, but not right now. So we might just have to leave this one on watch for a little bit until it uh, gives us some good levels again. But yeah, that that was one hell of a move on DocuSign that continued today, and that's over now. And again, that's $35 profit on that. And we will move on to, let's go to Toll Brothers is the next one. Toll Brothers, I sold the 40 strike on Monday for $25. And yesterday's gap up, I mean, we weren't really threatening the level i mean this was wednesday we had plenty of space and then yesterday only confirmed that we weren't even gonna come close to getting a sign i still wanted to close it early anyway um just because just to get rid of the position rather than letting it expire today although it would have been fine i decided to close it anyway i closed it or I sold it for 25 dollars closed it for five and ended up being a 20 dollar profit on that one so great great trade there i mean all these ended up working out foot locker is next Let's go to Foot Locker. This was the 30 strike that I sold. It was in jeopardy on Wednesday. Let's go to the five minute chart. This is where we closed before CPI. We were right down here getting stuffed underneath that strike. It looked like we may have had a hard time getting above 30 and I was going to get assigned or have to be forced to roll it down and out again. But yesterday's price action saved the day with every other position that I had. And I ended up closing this one for $5 too. I sold it for 20 bucks at the $30 strike and I closed it for five and captured $15 of profit or a 75% capture of the premium. Get rid of that one. Bath and Body Works is the other one. Same, same type of deal with Foot Locker, same chart structure, same strike and same price action um, over the last couple of days. Sold the $30 strike, sold two puts for $20. Closed them both for $5 each and ended up being a $30 profit or a 75% capture of the premium, just like Full Locker. All right. Last one is ZIM. There's a, a couple things that happened here. So we'll get into this right now. ZIM is having a nice day, a nice couple days, which is great to see. I have 100 shares at a unfavorable cost basis way up here at 3607. But we'll, uh, you know, we'll work on that. So what I did was I was waiting for an opportunity to sell a put at the $22 strike. I couldn't get it on Monday because the premium wasn't paying enough. We gapped up and it just wasn't working. But after um, Wednesday's price action where we sold off, let's go to the five minute chart. This, this day right here, we sold off, kept trickling lower and I was able to get decent premium at the 22 strike. It wasn't a whole lot in terms of a full week's worth of premium, but half of the week was already over. So $15 on that strike wasn't too shabby and uh the, it ended up being a 30 percent annualized return anyway so i was happy with that and it's still open right now that's why it's on the bottom banner right now of, of my of the screen zim cash gear put out 22 expiring today but i mean you can see the chart this has hardly any chance of being assigned or being put into jeopardy so i'm just going to consider it a successful trade that expires worthless capturing 100 percent of the premium or a $15 profit on that position. So that's awesome. I'm going to get rid of that line. But we're not done there. What happened this week was on Monday. Let's go to the 15 minute chart. Go back over here. This was um, this was Monday's price action. We had a gap up here and then we ripped up. So with ZIM, because my cost basis is so high on my shares, I'm looking for any opportunity to sell calls. Now, I'm not going to be able to sell calls in profit territory because I'm so underwater, but I can look to sell calls and look for, I should say, high probability setups to sell calls. This one right here was one from a few weeks ago. We had a massive spike up. ZIM loves to sell off. And um, this is a really dramatic extended move that it really doesn't do. I took that as a good opportunity to sell a covered call up here with the anticipation that this long already extended move wouldn't continue and sure enough that was correct it did trickled lower 
and uh, that covered call expired worthless, and I was able to lower my cost basis. So any type of day like this, which is a dramatic spike up, which is kind of uncharacteristic of this company right now, the way it's been behaving the past couple months, I look for an opportunity to sell a call because I don't buy into that rally continuing. That's what I did on Monday, which was um, right, right here. So right here, we got towards the highs, like these highs that we haven't really been at. We only touched it a couple of times throughout the last couple of weeks. So we got back up there. It's prior resistance. It typically doesn't move too much higher than this. I sold the 26 covered call for this Friday. So it was, this was on Monday. So I sold the call for the current week at the 26 level. But after yesterday, after yesterday's CPI price action, ZIM really rallied. Um, it came back up to... It got up to 2560. So right here, we're talking about higher than the prior Monday or the prior few days in the week. And my, although it wasn't in, although my call was in the money at the 26 strike, I still felt the need to roll it up and out, especially because I could get some decent premium with time value, closing the current call and selling one for next week, capturing all that time value for decent premium at a level that I don't think it'll end up being at with all that extra time. Um, so that's what I did. I closed the 26 covered call. I only took a $5 loss. So it wasn't like it was like way in the red and I had to, hey, I was forced to roll it. It was only a $5 loss. It was about break even, but the only way I could close it was hitting the ask, which was five cents over break even. So I, I lost five bucks, but then I sold the 27 covered call for $60 net. So I lost five on the other one. I sold this one for 65. It ends up being a net credit of $60, which is a great credit to receive on ZIM covered calls, especially since my cost basis is way up here. If I can somehow get $60 at a level that I don't think will be assigned at a, on a, after a good, nice pop-up, extended pop-up, then that's great because that'll adjust my cost basis by 60 cents if it expires worthless. Now, today's price action is up 8% right now. I wasn't really expecting that. I wasn't expecting this much follow through, um, but we're getting it. And now we're close to that covered call strike. You can just see it right here on the daily chart. Now we have until next Friday. So we have a whole nother week. Will this rally continue? Can ZIM support this push up for five more days? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of skeptical. I mean, you can already see what happened last time when we were up here. Nice, strong push. Things were looking good. And then it just sells off. So I don't really expect this thing to just start like a new uptrend now. But it very well could. I'm just not really expecting that just because of how just negative it's been lately. So we have another week. Although we're close to that covered call strike, I do want to give this thing as much time as I can for it to inevitably sell off. Because that's just how it's been. I just have to go with the nature of the stock. I'm not going to try to time a reversal. I'm just going to keep playing the behavior and the, the history of the stock. The history is when it has these nice pops, it ends up just selling off. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We have another week. But that's what I did. Got $60 premium for that covered call, which will be a very nice adjustment to my cost basis if I can capture it all. If it does rally beyond 27 and it looks like it's going to get a sign, I'm going to be forced to roll it again because I'm not going to take assignment down here and take, you know, a $9 per share loss or whatever on the on my shares. So we'll have to see how that management goes, but we have time before we have to really make any decisions. But yeah, really nice couple days from ZIM. You like to see it. I love opportunities to sell covered calls on this thing and attempt to lower my cost basis. So hopefully that ends up working out. Um, there was also a gold position. I actually forgot to, to talk about gold, Barrett Gold. What a rally this thing's been having. So I ended up, after having a put a couple puts last week that I rolled into this week, I ended up having a net credit of $16 per per contract. I sold two contracts at the 1450 strike. And, well, gold had a pretty strong week this week, and I closed those for $6 total. So I received $32 total, closed them for $6 total, and profited $26 there. So that was earlier in the week. I, had already, I already had that wrapped up by my midweek update video. Uh, but that's it. That's all of my positions for the week. I made $141 on the whole week, bringing my total on the month to $297. We still have three more weeks of November. 
two more full weeks and then a half week that I'm just going to wrap up into November. So the way I'm looking at it, there's five weeks in November and we are only done with two. So far, so good. Over $100 in both weeks, averaging just about $150 per week right now. That's excellent. That's shaping up to be an over $500 on the month if these trends continue. Now, the thing is, with these massive rallies, or this, this massive rally we've had the past few days, it's going to be hard to kind of find some good levels because now we're now we're pushing up. It's easy to find levels to play cash gear puts on when things are selling off because they're approaching support. Right now, things are moving away from support. So in order to get good premium, you'd have to play a strike that's not necessarily at a good support level because it's it, the current price isn't currently close. So we'll have to see what we want to do. Like for instance, DocuSign is one that I've been loving to play, wanting to get a sign near 40s or just as low as I can get it. Now that we're up at fifty dollars, I'm not gonna play a catch gear put at like forty five because I would rather because I just had an opportunity to get assigned at like forty. So I'm not gonna take forty five. It's not even at support. And with a current downtrending bear market, you'd rather it'd be safer to play um support. Again, if this is a bull market, maybe I would get away with that. But since we're I do believe we're gonna keep trending lower over time, I don't think that's that's wise. So I'm going to, have to do some research and find some good names that maybe are at good support or at least close enough to good support where I can get decent premium. Um, so yeah, we'll have to do some research there. But check SPY one last time. Yeah, we are starting to sell back off now. We are in the wedge. We are back in the wedge and we are continuing lower. We haven't reached the low of day yet, but um, you know, since I've made this video, we've only, whoa, we've only gone lower. So we'll have to see how it goes, but I'm not worried about my current positions. They're, my ZIM put's going to expire worthless today. And my covered call isn't until next week. So we're fine. That's it, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had one hell of a last couple days with CPI. That was very exciting. If you played to the long side, you probably made money. As always, guys, like the video, subscribe for more content, and I will catch you guys in the next one.